Okay, should have audio now. Don't know why that changed. Hi, Laurie. How's everyone doing? That's what I was saying. I was just getting things set up. My uh, ball cam's not working for some reason. I can't see it. But um, I can use the space for data sheet. Hold on. It's just not enough room on here. Not enough room. I wonder, can I maybe put that up there? Right. I'm just moving some things around so I can see what I'm doing here. Otherwise, I cannot see the windows. Um, can you just tell me if this text is all right here, um, Laurie? Is that readable? It's okay, is it? Can you see the terminal? Yeah, I think that's showing up okay. Cool. So how's everyone doing? We have tea. Oh, today was a bit of a long day again. Not only that, I got uh, sent around in circles. was a bit of a pain. Went the long way around and it turned out to be a waste of time. Picked my daughter up but she'd already been picked up. Grr. Which is why I'm a little bit later today. Right so um, what we're probably going to do is work on the continue with the uh, flash stuff for Black Crab. But I want to have a quick chat about the other things that we want to do moving forward. One of the things that I really want to do, not today obviously, but uh, in coming streams, is do work on something um, that is a bit like PIO, but on the FPGA. Um, this idea isn't properly formed in my mind, just to make it more confusing. Have I got enough light on here? Um, the idea here is to, well, at least initially, interface with the FPGA over QSPY MEM and to the IO. If you remember that, we were doing some IO. But basically do some IO that's a bit like PIO but the kind of state machine and everything would be written uh, inside uh, Python or more particularly in Amaranth. Now At one level, you can obviously do all your HDL in Amaranth anyhow. So what am I talking about? What's new? Well, not a lot, apart from QSPY MEMS attached to it. But um, I was hoping to do something at a slightly higher level. So it's easier to set the PIOs up and program them in a Python. Um, kind of a DSL, a domain specific language. So it's kind of like PIO, 
but um, rather than using, if you like, low level assembly, you're using some Python objects to manipulate that. I mean, you can already do that for PIO, by the way. Uh, I think in the MicroPython version that Raspberry Pi support, um, there is basically a Python object, but actually you're just a, the object is just representing um, uh, assembly instructions. Um, and I don't want to have assembly instructions. I think that makes it more difficult. What I want is a state machine that can be manipulated in Python, but underneath it's creating Amaranth high, uh, HDL parts to get the function. Um, what's the state of the hardware now? When do you think you might update it? Um, well, I've got to decide what I'm going to order. I've got to order some bits. I'm probably not going to order as many bits as I was before because I won't have time to put them all together. The problem I've got at the moment is for some strange reasons, so I've upgraded or updated my machine, KiCad has stopped working and I haven't been able to fathom it out yet. I need to sit down this weekend and get that working again. I don't quite know how I've managed to broken it. It looks to work, but whenever I try and open anything, nothing happens. It kind of goes through the motions and then doesn't open it. But it doesn't throw up an error either. It's kind of weird. I think it's something to do with the update. And I think I need to update KiCad itself I'm not going to do it now because it's a lot of hassle. Um, I thought I had updated it, but clearly something is broken. <sighs> so, um, yeah, that's holding me back a bit because there's a bunch of things that I've panelized in KiCad. So, I need to have KiCad work in order to repanelize those. That's my problem at the moment. Um, but once I fix that, I'll be able to do the order. So I was gonna order some blades, I was gonna order the battery uh, board. And there were some tiles as well that I'd finished. I want to order those. I'm not sure if I'm gonna order the new versions of the back ice, sorry, the black. Black Edge NXT boards. I'm still undecided on that, whether I want to change them again before I order. So that is the status at the moment. Um, I think once I get KeyCab working, I can get the Gerbers out and I can order them. So I've certainly got the finances to do so now, which is good. Excuse me for yawning. Does that answer your question, Roy? I know that's not got a particular date associated with it. But if I can get KeyCab working this weekend, I can get them ordered this weekend, is what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, well, the PMOD tile is already done, so I don't think. Oh, mind you, I've got to panelise it. <clears throat> so, again, that's stuck behind the um, keycat issue. But I will fix the keycat issue. I'm pretty sure it's got to be something to me. I might have to reinstall it. I'm, I'm hoping to not do that because I had a bunch of configuration stuff in there. But. Um, I'm not quite sure what broke it, to be honest. It was one of the updates. I've also got a pending OS update, which I'm avoiding doing for fear of breaking stuff even more. 
uh, the Ubuntu LTS update to 22, is it? I forget. And I'm avoiding that because of my current issue. But yeah, having the working PMOD tile would be nice. Not just the PMOD tile, but some of the others as well that we're waiting for. Um, and I really want that battery thing as well, that'd be cool. And uh, yeah, I want to do some work on the... Um, I don't even know what to call this thing. PIO-like. Um, I might call it PYO or something. PYIO, maybe. PIO. Some play on names. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? And yes, I need to decide for the PYIO, the PIO, PIO. Um, we'll need, oh, crazy, I'm keeping you all up. Up. We will need a some hardware to target it to, to do, to develop these kind of, BDA based state machines, IO state machines, Python based. Um, I don't know what the best thing to use will be. Um, I don't know whether it would be best to do something like a motor one, maybe, or. Um, well, a test one might be a seven segment one. We could easily do a seven segment one. Although it's hardly going to strain um, the Pi AO. Pi Yo, whatever it's going to be called. Um, but we need to think about how we're going to do it. But I'm thinking some sort of domain-specific language in Python that sits above Amaranth, that creates the Amaranth objects and renders the HDL effectively, or synthesizes the HDL through Amaranth. So it would be more efficient than PIO as is, which tends to be use up a lot of resources, actually. Certainly when we did the previous one. It needs to be much more efficient than that. I mean, it should be doable because what we're doing is fairly straightforward. And we've got plenty of flexibility in the FPGA to do it with. Um, also need to do more on the wrapping the Verilog within Python. Is there a hum noise or something? My levels look rather high. Is it humming at all? Sorry. Seems like there's a very high constant level there. Can't hear a hum. It's just it's buzzing around, you know. Minus 20 dB, is it minus 20 dB? Seems like a lot of noise. Seems to pick up everything. So yes, that's the current state of play. Um, I also need to do some sock stuff as well. But that can wait, I can do that afterwards. So today, let us do some um, 
some work on flash and black crab uh, I commented this out the other day because I needed to run it um, I remember what, 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 what we were doing. We copied and pasted some stuff in from the FPGA, didn't we? Oh, did I write the commands out in the structure? Yes, I do have commands. We wrote those. flash write spy flash read spy flash program I don't know if we're gonna need an erase there come back to that something we will need here is an is some base things for <sighs> hmm that's annoying why does it think that should be there? Is it because of where this is? Anyhow. Uh, these are going to be Flash. <sighs> what do I want? Device. Device and what do you need device? What should we call this? Flash, 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 flash. Let's just call this. Flash commands, it's flash device. Let's say flash device. Let's use that because we need to specify a bunch of stuff. Let's 
very important. Um, do we need none? No, I don't think so. We need read command. What's that? Uh, 003, I guess. Let's have a look on here. Read array. O3 is read. What's the difference between O and B? O B looks faster. Address bytes. Three dummy bytes. One data bytes. I don't want any dummy bytes. So let's use that one. What's the dual output read? Oh, that, these are QSPI modes. We were only connected via SPI in this case, so that's no good. So read will be um, 03. And Be a register read as well, isn't there? Status register. Let's do these first. So read. Right. Write enable, right? Disable. We need to do the ID as well. Ninety. Let's do that first, actually. So we'll need that. Uh, Called read ID and that is read manufacturing device ID read ID. What's the difference? Oh, is it the nine F one that we did before? Is that the standard one? Or was it 90? Damn. One of them is standard and one of them is um, more specific. Read manufacturer and device ID 9F. That reads three data bytes. Dummy bytes, zero. I say 9F. Before we get back, uh, so read. There's a wake up one, isn't there? What is the wake up one that we should send? Normally, a wake up one, if I remember right. Maybe not. Resume from deep power. A, B, is that it? I guess that will wake it up. Maybe we should put that in as well. Let's just copy that. Um, resume. Uh, AB. So that's 
to kind of wake up. Read ID. Need that one. Um, erase actually, we're going to need erase. Thinking about so, erase. Oh, there's different ones. Crikey, block erase. Um, 4K 20H. Two other types of arrays that we could use. Um, what are the other sizes? Thirty two. Should we put K? Makes it clear, doesn't it? And what was the five sixty four K? And thirty two was fifty two. As we got resume. In fact, I don't like resume. Well, yeah, let's leave it as resume. Read ID. Read. Oh, there's a chip erase as well. I guess we should. Wow, why is the two chip erase commands? What's the difference? <sighs> Just call that erase, right? And with, what is this? Sixty. What's the difference? I wonder between. Race. Chip array sixty or fifty seven. Yeah. 
if there's no difference in device functionality when utilising the two opcodes, they can be used interchangeably. So where were we? Erase. What was that? It was. Did I say sixty? Well, it's pissing it down outside, folks. No, I put it there. Sixty or C seven. It doesn't this seem to matter which. So we've got those erases. What else might we need? Byte page program. Byte page program. Does that mean write a page? I think it does. <coughs> so that would be like page write. Excuse me, sorry for coughing, it's horrible. Do that knife. Excuse me. <coughs> Page. Right. Program. It does say here one to two fifty six because it's a page two fifty six page size, right? If I need to use write in label, I tell you what, I will need actually additional to this before I add any more commands and before I forget. A section here. Page. Let's do that first. I think that's two oh. two Six 
think. Was it 496k? Basically, 4K vector size, sector size. This is too small. So is that she's a sixteen? Those sizes up. I think that's okay. What's it saying? Syntax error. Because why is that syntax error? Missing type for const or static. What? 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 What's that doing there? Maybe that's what's confusing the hell out of it. But it's only a comment. the hell is it complaining about? Cheers. Is it not like U16? What am I missing here? Is that because that's there, do you think? No. What is it complaining about? Back to that in a minute. Oh, colon's being a twat. Excuse me, Mr. Being an idiot. Honestly. Why doesn't it like that? Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, is it because we've already got page somewhere? 
I change that? No. I have no idea why it isn't like that. Um, hmm. Any ideas, anyone? What am I missing? Oh, it's okay now. Maybe just the rust analyzer catching up. Right, um, what other commands are we missing? What have we got here? Resume, resume. Deep power down. Sleep, do we want that? I don't know if we need that. Power down, be in this blue. Might be useful. Hmm. Incorrect. It should be deep power down, apparently. Oops. I didn't understand why that was having an issue. What else did we want? Power down. Device ID. Um, status register. We need read and write status registers, I guess. Read. Uh, read SR is O five. Oh, it does this in um, two bytes. Oof. That's a pain. Read SR. LSB. I guess. Read status register. Right. Need that, and we might also need its pairing cousin. I guess. So that was um, it says at O five by two is thirty five. And I guess we need a write status register. Write status register. This doesn't seem to be both bytes. Right, status register. That can be one or two bytes. It's the same command for both, depending on how many you send. Oh, one.
Right, status register one. Um, or two bytes. I'm going to bore with any of the security stuff. Right enable for volatile status register. What the hell is that? The non volatile status register bits described in table 10.1 and 10.2 can also be written to as volatile bits. During power up reset, the non volatile status register bits are copied to a volatile version of the status register bits that is used during device operation. This gives more flexibility to change the system configuration and memory protection schemes quickly without waiting for the typical non volatile bit write cycles or affecting the endurance. Of the status register number to write volatile version. So that's innate write enable for volatile status fifty. Must be issued prior to each write status register instruction. Possibly. So that remembers it afterwards. Basically. I'm not that bothered about that at the moment. That could be an optimization. Later. What else do we need to do? Have we covered ourselves? Program arrays suspend. Program arrays resume. Would we need that? I don't think so. I think we are covered. I think that will do us for now, command wise and status wise. I'm surprised you can't read that in two bytes. Okay, that's that. Um, allow dead code that just allows these to be defined but not used, right? It's one of those registers, commands. It's flash device, I guess. Uh, I guess what we should do first is read the ID to make sure we're reading things. We did do this before. Let me check the SPI mode. I'm just going to have a quick look. Why have I got lots of versions of this? Let's just quickly check. Uh, it was 
was a version of Black Crab where we did a flash ID test. I seem to recall. Question is which one was it? I don't know. Um, it wasn't that one, that's for sure. I don't even know if we need to do this. Let me just get back to here for a moment. We, what we might be able to do is um, action, 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 match self far command, flash right. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I remember now. We actually did it at the end of the initialization. I remember now. It's in the latest version, actually. Sorry, forgive me. Who to do to do? Here we go. Now, oh, have we already done this? Yes, we have here. Look. <coughs> so it does a wake up first. Um, 
and then it does F. So I can replace these with these, can I not? Flash device. So I already have this function extraordinarily. Uh, I'm being a idiot. It's not a member. It's um this is um it's a constant. Um resume that was a kind of wake up, wasn't it? If I hover over this you should tell me the value. OX eight B, yeah. So the same again here now that we're using these. <coughs> 9f uh, read ID, right? That should be 9f. Coincidentally, it is. So that already does that. Q! And we can now use our uh, internal enum, which is much better. All right. So I need to think again about these actions. Um, So let's remind ourselves of this interface, the action interface. We have a run, which is responsible for doing orchestrating, normally formed by a prep. The actual action, and then the completion, final. Let's just change this as well. Fact, what I should also have here, what I use a lot, is uh, hmm. is this one. Okay, let's go back. Good. Now it highlights my to dos for me. Very nice. Um, so I've got to think of the uh, process here. Which, which should I do first? We've got several things that we have to implement. Command wise, spy flash program, spy flash write. What are the other ones? I guess there should be an arrays. Did I do an arrays? Yeah. 
Yeah, she probably had a um, an erase. Spy flash erase. I think about it, and that should erase the whole ship, I guess. Doesn't matter what these numbers are, as long as they're different. Program. Spy flash, write, read, erase. If anything, it should be the other way around. Read, erase, write. I'll just change that around. Why not? Prefer it the other way around. Make that five. And right six. And get rid of that. is around today not many people it's very quiet this Wednesday evening go back to the flash so commands to implement here The reason I have this is because I wanted a program. Where did we get to last time? We were thinking, I know, we analysed this, didn't we? We said rather than have it program the flash and then read it afterwards, it would be two separate commands. If I remember correctly. So at a higher level, it would issue two commands. So one would be to program the flash. The next would be to program the actual FPGA with that very same image. Because it should still be in the buffer, is what we were thinking. However, There's two problems with that. The first problem is the buffer may not hold the entire image. So we can't be sure that we can program the flash. So that's not a good idea. Secondly, it doesn't check what's in the flash. So really what we should do when programming the FPGA image into flash is actually program it into flash. The erasing as we go along. We'll come back to that in a minute. And then read it back from flash into memory, local memory, and then write it to to the FPGI. FPGA. That would be a better way of doing it. That needs to be done above this flash level. Those are individual flash commands. There are existing flash commands. So let's just think about sizes as well. So the smallest amount in order to in order to write anything into flash we have to erase the sector right if it, if we are 
not worried about keeping what's already on the flash in any way. We could, we don't have to worry about reading the contents out and, rip, and putting them back. So in other words, we just erase the sector and then write the sector. If we were concerned about keeping it and maybe we had like a partial sector that had contents What we have to do is read those contents, that subsector size contents, erase the entire sector, write what we've just read back, plus any new stuff that was added to that. Initially, I'm not sure that we need to do all of that because I'm trying to think. So, our usage is. Um, to store the FPGA image. That's our initial force, but that may not be all that we want to store in the flash. Black Crab may want to store other stuff in the flash. It's 16 megabits, which is two megabytes. The flash image for something like um, a um, i40 HX an 8k image is about 136k so we'd only be using a small amount of that um, the other thing we could do is have two flash images And alternate between them. Why would we want to do that? I know these are FPGA images. The reason we might want to do that is if we're writing to the flash and something goes wrong halfway through, we end up with an image that is partial because it may have overwritten part of the previous image but not all of it. If you have two images, pool, sorry, two, then every time you write an image, you write to the alternate one. So there's always a good one. I mean, it's not so important because we're not booting off the flash, but it would ensure that there was always a good FPGA image, one that hadn't been corrupted during write. We're probably going to have to do some CRC checking and that kind of stuff as well at some point. So, in other words, we could have two FPGA images that would be about 136 to 136, that's 270k. But we still got, well, we've got two megs, so there's still a lot of spare space for stuff. What else would we want to store? Any thoughts let me know. Oh. Sorry I'm keeping everyone up here. I'm so tired. I don't think I slept well last night. I nearly, f I nearly dozed off after lunch today. You know what it's like when you just eat and had a whole bunch of code to write. What was I writing today? Oh yes, I'm writing um, SD code at the moment. Joy of joys. Um, a bit of here. I haven't got any candy. I might have a lemon sugar, but. So we could have two flash images potentially. I only need one for the testing to start with. And I'm not sure what else we're going to use. But can you remember anything else that we were going to use the flash for, guys? I'm sure we had some other plan.
Weston Long. Oh, hi, Weston. Yeah, I'm just, just, I am doing some rust. I'm working on black crab. I'm working on the flash stuff. Flash to pull. I was just trying to remember whether there was something else. So this, what, what, what this is, this is the flash chip connected to the microcontroller. So we can store the flash image in to make the image permanent. So when it powers up, uh, the micro, the STM32 can read the flash, black crab can read the flash and program the FPGA from power up. So it can use a permanent image. And we may have two images, as I just discussed which is a bit better because if one gets corrupted during writing there's always a good one to fall back on. It's less important here because we're not booting into the flash but it might be a good practice. Yeah, to do persistent programming of the FPGA, that's correct, Preston. But I, I, we, I was just thinking that we were going to use the flash for something else as well, but I can't remember what it was. Not just the FPGA. Something else. What else did we need permanent? Maybe I should just work on getting the um, FPGA image done. Oh, that, right. Thank you, Laurie. On the Black Eyes 1, 2, we used a flash for ROMs, such as Risk Five ROMs or Reto Computer ROMs. That's a good point. However, Given that this flash isn't connected directly to the FPGA, the FPGA can't read those ROMs. So we maybe need to do something like write those ROMs into memory for the SOC or whatever in the FPGA into the uh, into the RAM or of course write it into the hyper flash or the spy flash if it's the spy flash version I mean when it starts up Laurie what it could do is it could program the FPGA and then perhaps somehow if it had a flash, if it had a ROM code that had been added, then it could actually copy that into the hyper flash perhaps using QSPY mem. In order for that to work whatever the FPGA image was would have to have QSPY by mem support. Black Eyes 1 and 2 also did not have flash connected to the FPGA. Is that right? I thought it did. So things like Hoglet's project copied over as I ran. Yeah, I mean to a degree, because you've got hyperflash on there, you might not to need to store any of the ROMs, you might write those directly from the host into the flash, the hyper flash, 
So what will we actually be gaining by writing it into the spy flash? Perhaps not a lot. I'm just trying to think how I'm going to partition the um, flash is a one. Um, the flash we're talking about here, Western, is the flash chip, which is connected via SPI to the SDM32. It is already on the Black Edge NXT board. It's on this board. In fact, there, where my finger is. It's not showing very well. Do see. I can't remember what the IC number is. Let me have a look. Yeah, I see six. You are quite correct. Yeah, Laurie, I'm not sure if there's any benefit to writing the ROM in images to the STM32 flash. Because if you've, e you've, you've either got either Hyper Flash or Spy Flash that's going to be attached to the I40. So it can be made persistent through use by mem oh. the other thing with the um, hyper flash is it's much bigger than the um, flash connected to the STM32 anyhow on the STM32 I'm just thinking configuration data really Unless we have just some sort of bootloader, maybe. But then the bootloader really needs to be on the flash that's connected to the FPGA, not the STM32. Uh, Lorry's agreeing that there is much benefit in writing to the STM32 ROM, writing ROM to the STM32 flash if there's already flash connected to the FPGA directly. So, in that case, the only use I can think of the flash right now is for the FPGA image. and some local configuration stuff for the SDM32 because the SDM32 doesn't have much flash so it could benefit from using the external supply flash Okay, that's an interesting idea.
Laurie is suggesting, saying, another thing you could do is simulate something like the ICE-40 multi-boot capability that enables you to switch between different synthesis images on the ICE for the ICE-40. So you could have more than one image and have some mechanism of choosing which image uh, to program the ICE-40 with. Hold on one sec. I am streaming, Dots. <laughs> Alright, I've sorted out. Give me a sec. Bear with me just a second folks, I'm just going to mute for a moment, uh, there's a crisis, but not an important one. Apologies, folks. <sighs> um, Laurie's saying a mechanism for switching between the different images could be button. Or a command from the PC or a cue by mem interrupt from the FPGA. Ooh, I'm trying to think how that would work. So the ICE 40 synthesis that's running, whatever it's doing, can actually request that it gets itself reprogrammed with another image. Ooh. If we connect to the display to the STM32, that could be selected that way as well. Um, when you were doing your retro stuff, ah, uh, Laurie, you were doing what was it? There was a VGA with a menu on it. Is that right? And an LCD with a menu on it. Presumably, that could be a means of selecting. Uh, you know, I did a nice presentation on the ULX3 where each slide was a separate bit stream and used a button to go to the next one. Oh, what, as a presentation, what, using VGA or HDMI or something? Oh, yeah, it's kind of cool, showing off a bit, but yeah. I can see where you're coming from.
Yeah, I guess because it can't program itself. Um, choosing what it was going to run on itself. Yeah, if it was just picking up something to run on the retro or on the computer itself, it can do that from its hyperflash or spy flash that's connected to it. But yeah, if it is asking to be reprogrammed with an entirely different image, then that would need to happen from the STM32, right? My guess. So as you say, the synthesis running on the SGA, on the ICE forty would have to um, perform an interrupt. That interrupt would then have to be service. That would reveal, you know, some event ID that meant reprogram me or send me a list of choices or something could start start a conversation yes you could use VGA or LCD menu to choose a bitstream but it still needs an interrupt sent to the STM32 yeah I think if it sends an interrupt um, The STM32 could then query it to see what kind of event that was. And it could return, you know, something like a program, I, program FPGA command, followed perhaps by an image number or address or something, if there were multiple addresses. Possibly. Mm. Definitely worth thinking about. Um, so from a image point of view, the only thing we can think of so far is multiple images for the FPGA then. Um, so let's think about it this way. The data flash, should I call it a data flash? What should I call it? The black flash if you like. The flash on the uh, STM32 that Black Crab is reading. The first byte could have the current um, selected image file to program. Uh, the ice 40 so there could be up to eight different images what did I say 136 not eight It'd be a lot more than eight 136 two to six uh, hold on two Space to be here to see my key properly with my power key. Okay, so we could fit in what? I 
we could actually fit in about 15 um, different FPGA images. So the first byte in the flash could represent the image number and maybe some other configuration bits. Well, what am I talking about? So what we've got is an even easier way of doing something stupid. Let's do it directly, right? The flash is two to the 16, is it not? Two make flash it means it's a 16 bit address. Yeah. So the first two bytes of the flash could be the address for the current image. How about that? So when it starts up it reads the first two bytes and says, oh, that's the address of the current image. And it will jump to that address, read the FPGA image and program the FPGA, the yeah, 40 And in the case where there are multiple images, um, the FPGA would have to select which one um, it would like to use next. But I guess the only issue with that is the ICE 40 synthesis would have to know how many images were there and what the address of each image was. Or you could just store the image number if they were all fixed sizes because you know the increment of each. But we'd probably want to avoid sector overlapping, working whole 4K sectors. Avoid partially writing a sector. However, that means we'd have to reserve a sector just for the meta information, which is 4K, which seems like an awful lot. Ah, it's annoying. If we wanted to make them sector aligned images, this is what I'm thinking. Um, whilst, whilst I'm thinking about this, um, Laurie's just posted something on the um, on Discord. This is Emard's presentation that he was talking about. I better post this on the um, on Twitch as well. I might have a look at that in a minute. I need to have a think about this. What do you think is the best way of doing it then? Um, so the smallest sector size we can reserve is 4K. That gives us 4K of metadata and then up to 15 images, I guess. Let me just add that up. So they need to be on 4K boundaries. 136 divided by 4 and 96 equals 136 divided by 136 to the 3 divided by 4 and 96 equals 33. 
So each um, FPGA image is 33.2 sectors. So in other words, 34 sectors. Hmm. And the total number of sectors, hold on, is It's actually 21 bits, not 16 bits for the address. Um, there's 512 sectors. So there's 512 sectors divided by what, 34? Sorry, let's take away 4K, minus 4K. No, minus one sector. It's five and nine. Divided by thirty-four. Yeah, uh, we can still fit fifteen in there and spare the four K. A uh, one sector for the metadata. Um, it's twenty-one bit address because it's two to twenty-one, which is just over two megabytes, or five twelve sectors in total for this current ship. Uh, Western Long saying, does this mean that you can have more than one FPGA image stored on the board and select which one to program with a button or something? Uh, Laurie says yes, that's exactly what we're talking about. So, we could have up to 15 images and we'd have 4K. In fact, how many sectors would we have? For metadata, we'd have quite a bit. So, uh, 15 times. Thirty-four, five hundred and ten. So we've got two spare sectors effectively for metadata, or eight eight k for metadata, and then we could still have thirty-four, up to thirty-four images if we wanted to, which seems like a lot. Is that right? Seems like too much. Let me just check on my math here. One thirty six. Okay, it's right about one nine six. Yeah, thirty four per fifty. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we could have up to 15 images and still have two sectors for metadata. Given that it's 21 bit address for the start of each um, uh, for the address, then the scheme we could use is if we had 16 bit, uh, if we read two bytes out, 16, 24 bits, uh, no, that wouldn't work. 24 bit, 24 bits, we need 21 for the rest, that leaves three. For the index number, Ooh, it's not going to quite fit. That would be three bytes. We had four bytes. Four bytes per entry would give us the 21 bit address. Plus, we'd have another 11 bits. To describe the um, 
the image or number the image I'm just thinking of efficiently um, encoding the it's like a directory right so we've got a 32 bit um, 32-bit description which is four bytes to represent each image and 21 of those bits is the start address and there's another 11 bits effectively that can be used to give it a number and maybe some kind of metadata Or what? You, actually, what might be a good idea is um, it'd be a good idea to record the date that the image was created, as well as uh, a number. Do we have? Actually, we don't really need to. Um, to record the address because we know it's 34 sectors so if we just give it a number it's that number times the number of sectors well that's a bit awkward it's a calculation it could work it's just times 4096 for me um, in which case when you record a real-time clock epoch how many bits does that take? Long time since I've done it. Uh, normally, when you talk to an art, uh, a um, RTC in a microcontroller, you actually read register values for the actual. Um, Day, year, month, that kind of thing. Should we store it as day, year, month, time? Or do we store it as um, uh, not done any of the real time clock stuff yet, so I don't know. We can either s save it in an epoch like way, a number of seconds since, you know, whatever the dawn of time is, or we could even store in the metadata for each image a, um, oh, 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 that's an idea. What did I say about the numbers? If it's 136k for the image, that might not be exactly right. I need to check. That uses 33.2 sectors. So it's only 20% of a sector over. The rest of that information could be the metadata about the sector. Possibly. Rather than wasting it. Um, uh, hmm. uh, Western Long Island is pretty cool. How fast can an ICE 40 program itself from memory, more or less? Uh, it depends what you mean. The STM32 could program the ICE 40 really, really quickly. 
Uh, the limit is really the speed of the SPI, which I think maxes out about 15 megahertz or something when it's in program mode. Um, if the IS40 programs itself, which it can't do in our case because we don't attach a spy device to it on the programming pins directly. Um, but again, it's limited by the same sort of performance issues. Uh, not 50 megahertz. When it's programming, it's down like at 15, 15. It's actually really quite slow, the SPI rate that it can be programmed at. Compared to how fast, you know, if you did a spy synthesis, it'd be much faster. It's just the way it loads itself is slow. And that may have been done because it needs to write to internal memory and stuff, which may slow it down. Maybe doing like an internal boundary scan or God knows what in order to set up the FPGA elements. So maybe they didn't bother making it any faster. So it may not just be the spy speed, that maybe that could have been fast, but because it's programming the rest of the FPGA on the fly, um, that may be what's, what's limiting the programming speed. I don't know for sure, but it's just a guess. Um, but it's very quick when we program it now. Now that we're programming it using native SPI rather than bit banging, uh, which is effectively what we were doing in the older boards in the Black Ice MX, for example. Uh, it's pretty instant programming it now. When you're programming over the host, I mean. When you're programming it from the STM32 when it's reading from the SPI, it may depend on the SPI speed, but it should be able to read from the flash pretty fast. Faster than it can write to the FPGA, let's put it that way. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Right, so, which brings me back. So I'm just thinking about these images. We've got a choice. We could have, we've got, 8k's worth of metadata so we could describe each image in that 8k metadata or because we want the fpga image or up to 15 fpga images to occur on sector boundaries to make reading and writing easier there is 80 percent of a sector left for something like an ice 40 which could also be used for metadata what is that 80 percent of 4k or something You know, you've got 3.2K's worth of metadata, potentially. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you mean there, Western. Um, Western saying it would be really cool to execute programming using more than the max amount of available LUTs on the ice 40 by reprogramming as you required. Not sure whether this would be required possible. There is an idea that um, um, Gatecat was playing around with, Myrtle, whereby you partially reprogram sections of the FPGA rather than rewriting the entire one. In which case you would have something potentially larger than the sum of its parts. 
but um, that's kind of partial reconfiguration which I think he's managed to get working to at least some basic level on the ECP5 it doesn't work on the IS-40 which was an interesting topic of research but I don't know um, how much further that was ever taken I remember talking to um, Myrtle about it and I remember him claiming some success so in that instance yes you could have different parts that you select and you partially reconfigure the FPGA the reason for doing that would be in a large FPGA where you had fixed things like the sock for example and like the bus but you wanted to dynamically change other things like peripherals or something but you didn't want to write rewrite the entire FPGA um, and it could be quicker theoretically to just rewrite parts of the FPGA IO centric parts um, but it's quite complex if you think about it to do that um, when it's not kind of necessarily officially supported um, on the FPGA but maybe there is some basic support for that even if the software doesn't support it right so we need to have a think then about partitioning the um, flash so that it uses I haven't actually done much code today damn it what's the time quirky it's 10 o'clock um, Given that we've got 8K of metadata and still have room for 15 images that fall on sectors, we could certainly put metadata describing the sectors. Why would that be useful? Because the FPGA may ask us for what we have image wise and we then return, you know, a relatively small amount of data you know that has maybe an index ID number for the image maybe a timestamp for when that was written or updated and perhaps some sort of description string like description ASCII UTF-8 or some such um, that would enable the FPGA to interrupt the STM32 and say, Oi, give me a list of images I can choose from. It could then itself provide that list on a VGA or LCD uh, for a user to select an image from that they want the FPGA to be using next or to switch to the whatever's running in the ice whatever's synthesizing the ice f ice 40 at that point could then request to be programmed with that identity image that image id having been selected on that menu that would work possibly um and of course if that information was in the header it wouldn't take much to read it whereas if you put the header information in each image it's a bit more awkward to read but not impossible right because um, you know where all the images begin because they fall on sector boundaries so if you add header at the start of that um, that could easily be read sequentially through all the images. I just think it's nicer to have it at the start. It's a bit like a directory, you know, on the disk. Basically says, this is image ID 1. This is the timestamp. 
it was updated and this is the name perhaps or string associated with that <clears throat> so it's like a very primitive directory and obviously the address where it starts oh I can hear a twinkle cat at the door on the wrong side of the door no less that never happens what do you reckon not getting much feedback I just wanted to get some feedback we don't have to decide today I could do it next time for the next dream oh you want to say hello twinkles to the internet folks no there's no cats food Big dead. I might have some more time on Friday to do some more of this by the way I want to continue and get that stuff written anyhow have a think and let me know folks what we should do I'm thinking metadata in those first two sectors uh, and then up to 15 different images the metadata in the first two sectors will be an ID number timestamp for when it was updated and then a, a name a string no terminated string I mean, you could use a page. That'd be efficient for writing. Page, that's 256 bytes to describe each image. So that would include identity. Wait a minute, how many? It's 256, so you've got 4096 sectors. You've got two sectors, so that's 8192 divided by 256 equals so you could have up to 32 descriptions in two sectors if they were a page size each which is 256 why am i saying a page size because that's an official uh, no, sorry an official that's an efficient way of programming the flash why is it efficient because that's the maximum size you can write in one transaction 256 bytes so if each entry was 256 bytes that would enable that would enable not only identity timestamp and name but a description as well who's pinging me now uh, Everyone being hurried along, being hassled. Right, I'm going to finish up for now, but that's my thinking. So each entry in the meta area of the data flash could be 256 bytes, i.e., a page, 
and whatever went in there will be whatever we want so it could be things like an identity um, timestamp a name textual identity and some a description and or other metadata right that will do for today I may stream again on Friday if you're lucky and I will be down on um, discord as usual okay folks ciao